Thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Clark. I'm Alexandra Lewis. Tonight, three people are hurt after a shooting in downtown Denver along the 16th Street Mall. Nine News reporter Lawrence Kabidi is there for us. Lauren, what do we know? Yeah, we just watched them clear up the caution tape. A fire truck just moved in, but you can imagine just how busy it was here. About 400 feet away from Union Station in Lodo at rush hour. There was a bullet that went through one of the windows at Thirsty Lion. Here's a better look at that now. Here's a look from the outside. The owner also told me that there's a bullet hole inside in the wall of the restaurant. Denver police say it happened around 530 today. Three people were shot, all adults. They were taken to the hospital. We don't know how they're doing. Someone who lives nearby told me he heard a few gunshots while he was walking down the street and immediately ran up to his apartment. From there, he could see what happened next. The people who stopped for him, who took off their shirts and like helped make sure he was okay, even though there was a lot of danger happening around them, I think that was really courageous and beautiful. And um, I don't know who you guys are, but like God bless you guys because I was terrified and I ran. Businesses outside the caution tape stayed open like Takisa just a few doors down on Wine Coop. The new taco and tequila spot opened exactly one week ago today. The owner says it's been tough for this to happen in their first few days of business. I had a guest right here on the bar and they got up and ran to the kitchen almost, you know, try to get away from this big window that we have open all the time. And uh, yeah, that's been the hard part, like dealing with that type of um, situations here downtown. A few people I've spoken to have told me that they heard a couple gunshots and a crash uh, before all of this happened. So people here, you know, were very curious when this happened here earlier today. A couple of the businesses and the other people that we spoke to. Denver police say that they are looking for a suspect, but they haven't released any of that information yet. Live in Lodo, Lawrence Cafiti, 9 News. A 17-year-old girl is now facing charges accused of shooting and killing a 14-year-old girl at a park in Aurora. Kamaya Cleveland was at a friend's birthday party last month at Highland Hollows Park. It's right near Tower in Mississippi. A fight broke out. Somebody opened fire and killed her. Two other teenagers were hurt. APD says the teenager they arrested was already in custody on an unrelated case. They're not identifying her because she is a minor. She's facing charges for murder, attempted murder, and assault. Most of the storms we saw across Colorado today have moved out tonight. At one point, more than a dozen counties were under a severe thunderstorm watch. A few had warnings as well. We had a team out on the Eastern Plains grabbed this video north of Lyman. While most areas escaped damage, a reported tornado touched down in Elbert County. Elizabeth Fire shared these photos. This is from near County Road 21. Winds leveled an outhouse. Firefighters say the house on the property isn't damaged. Nobody there was hurt. Same area of Elizabeth, floodwaters closed down County Road 21 at Pronghorn Avenue. Elizabeth Fire shared these photos showing what they're dealing with tonight. They say that road will be closed overnight, possibly longer. Some action just to our east, Kathy. Yes, it's been an active weather day. Calm in Denver for now, but a reported land spout in the Broomfield area earlier today. A lot of hail out on the eastern plains, heavy flooding rainfall, and we also are getting reports of damaging thunderstorm wind gusts to 65 and 75 miles per hour. Temperatures today in the upper 80s. We've cooled back due to the rain and cloud cover out there, mid 60s this hour. The flood watch still in effect for some areas tonight, and we're still tracking severe weather in extreme northeastern Colorado, but the watch has been scaled back now to include portions of western Nebraska and the flood watch scaled back as well. The blue areas are all flood advisories, so really the bullseye for heavy thunderstorm activity is northeastern Colorado. Sterling out to the North Platte area. Storm movement from the southwest to the northeast. You can see the lightning. We had again that land spout up near the Broomfield area, possible tornado down toward the Elizabeth area, a lot of wind hail, rain, and a lot of flooding this afternoon. And an active weather day. We're starting to kind of watch as the rainfall totals are coming in, which can show you why we saw such substantial flooding from these storms. This is, you know, day three of these rainstorms coming in and bringing rain over saturated soil. So a little break from the rain in Denver for now. Coming up in Maine weather, we'll let you know how long that will last, and that's just ahead. A dentist who practices in Boulder is in federal custody in Florida tonight. Authorities arrested Jason Atha at Palm Beach International Airport last Friday. Court documents say that he flew there to meet a mother and her underage daughter for sex. The woman 
that he thought he was talking to on an app was actually an undercover special agent with Homeland Security. After admitting those were his messages, he told agents his phone had child porn, and that was confirmed by a search. Nine News reached out to the dental office where Ate the Works. The person who answered the phone would not comment. A cardiologist from Denver is now a convicted serial rapist. 36-year-old Stephen Matthews was accused of drugging and raping several women he met on dating apps. Today, a jury found him guilty on 35 of 38 counts. Prosecutors say he would meet women on these dating apps, give them drinks at his home, and then the women would black out. Police arrested Matthews in March of last year after one woman reported that he assaulted her. Once that story was made public, nine more women came forward. We spoke with Audrey, one of the survivors. Just hope that this case sets a precedent for all perpetrators of these types of crimes, that you will be prosecuted, women will be believed, you should believe women, um, and that you don't get to do this to the women of Denver without facing consequences. Each of Matthew's 35 convictions carries the possibility of multiple years in prison. His sentencing is set for October 25th. Tonight, dozens of former tenants in an apartment building in Aurora are staying in temporary housing, places like hotel rooms. Nine News reporter Ria Jha is here. in Ria, the city of Aurora, they stepped in to help, but it was, I mean, a bit of a logistical nightmare today. Yeah, city officials said they vacated 98 units this morning and had 60 hotel rooms ready to go. So the city left it to nonprofits like the East Colfax Community Collective to figure out how to place the families while they work to secure enough rooms for everyone. We got here about 5.30 or 6 this morning. Olivia Sanders, so that was like five rooms, with the East Colfax Community Collective, has been glued to this seat. It's been a lot of chaos here today. The city left it to Sanders and a few others to assign hotels to tenants who were forced out of the building on Gnome Street in Aurora. There has been a line the entire day since 9 o'clock this morning um, to get assigned to a hotel. Uh, yesterday, we were told that the city of Aurora had booked 85 rooms, and today we found out that they actually only had 59 booked. People like Iriani Perez and her three kids, ages 12, 5, and 3, didn't get a hotel voucher yet. Perez doesn't know where they're sleeping tonight. But she's holding on to hope for her kids. The city said they are working to secure additional hotel rooms. So they backed out the hotel. And the nonprofits helping with the transition say they're doing their best. Honestly, without the help of the community and mutual aid groups, we wouldn't have had food and water here. We wouldn't have people organizing transportation. You know, that those kinds of responsibilities shouldn't just fall on one singular nonprofit with only a few people. Wishing they had more help from the city. The city is not fully stepping up and fully accepting like the responsibility in what they have caused. The woman we spoke with today told us she did eventually get into a hotel room after 7 p.m. this evening. The East Colfax Collective said they did end up getting everyone assigned to a room, but they were still dealing with some family, some families who had issues checking in. Ria Jha, 9 News. Hope Has No Borders is another nonprofit that's offering help for the former tenants. It wants to match tenants with hosts in their program for 90-day stays. School is starting up and all of these kids are enrolled in school and we don't want them living in tents and in cars um, for their first days of school. We want them to take a shower and eat breakfast and get to school. People in need can call a help center and in partnership with the Mile High Uni United Way, start that intake process in Spanish if they prefer. And from there, if hosts are available, they'll be matched and hope that will provide the time and assistance they need. This group, Hope Has No Borders, is also looking for families and potential hosts in Aurora and across the Denver metro area. Mayor Mike Johnston is a step closer to getting a sales tax hike for affordable housing on the November ballot. First, though, he has to convince city council. Late last night, council members voted eight and five in favor of moving the measure to a final reading on Monday. The sales tax would add five cents to every $10 spent. The mayor says it would bring in about $100 million a year for a city already short more than 40,000 affordable housing units. Some council members say they don't have enough specifics, though, on how this money is going to be spent. This is not ready to go to the voters, especially not without some sort of guardrails around it. And we do not have a plan to be clear on what the money is going to be spent on. So it makes me wonder if we really know what we're doing 
by applying this money in the way that, well, we don't even know yet where it will be applied. Now, if it does pass next week, the proposal will make it to the November ballot.